Hello, gentlemen. Welcome to the latter half of our section four, entitled Solubility. Now, solubility is the property of a solid, liquid, or gaseous solute to dissolve in a solid, liquid, or gaseous solvent to form a homogeneous solution. In simple terms, solubility is the ability of a substance to dissolve into another substance. Now, we use solubility primarily when we're predicting whether or not a product will be a precipitate or not. Um, there are two sides of solubility. Is something soluble or insoluble? If a substance is soluble, that means it dissolves in water and is deemed as an aqueous solution. If a substance dissolves, it's aqueous. If a substance is insoluble, that means it does not dissolve in water and is deemed a precipitate. And again, a precipitate is when you have two aqueous solutions that react together and they form a solid. The solid that forms is called a precipitate and it is insoluble. Now, we determine solubility using some rules. And the rules are here in this table below. So I'm going to walk through this a little bit with you. These are solubility rules that are pertaining to ionic compounds in water. So let's first talk about this first subcategory of soluble compounds. These are compounds that will dissolve in water. Now, if a compound has any of these substances here, meaning a group 1A metal or ammonium, nitrate, acetate, or chlorate, if any of these things, these bullets here, are present in a compound, that substance is automatically soluble, meaning it dissolves in water, meaning beside it you would put an AQ for aqueous. Now, for these other white boxes here, a halide and a sulfate, if you see any of these substances in an ionic compound, they are soluble, meaning they, they make that compound soluble unless the cation paired with these anions is one of these things here. So a substance is soluble if it has any of these in it, unless it's paired with silver, mercury, or lead, or if sulfate is paired with silver, mercury, lead, and a group 2A metal from calcium down. If it is with one of these, then it is going to be a precipitate. It will be solid. However, if these are not there, then it will just be aqueous. Sorry for all the scribbles, guys, but hopefully you're following. Now, my second category here. If I look below, I look at the second part, insoluble compounds. Now, these are substances that are solid when put in water. They do not dissolve into aqueous solutions. So if we look here, these substances, the carbonate, the phosphate, the chromate, they are insoluble, meaning if you see these, that means that substance is going to be solid unless that substance has one of these in them ammonium or an alkali metal. If these are present in the midst of an ins or in the midst of a carbonate, phosphate, or chromate, then that substance is soluble or aqueous. If these are not present, then it is simply solid or insoluble. The same is true here. If we have hydroxides or oxides or sulfides present, we're thinking initially it's probably insoluble. Then we have to check to see if we have ammonium, alkali metals, or a group 2A metal from calcium down, or an alkali metal, or ammonium, or all of group 2A in this case. And don't worry, you'll be given this chart to reference as you do uh, some work. So let's actually do an example problem so that we can stop the theoreticals here and actually see how this is used. So, in our reaction above, 
we have that silver nitrate, which is soluble, reacts with copper to sulfate, which is soluble. It forms silver sulfate and copper to nitrate. Now, the question marks here are basically what are the states of matter based on your solubility chart below? So we look at what's involved here. We have silver and we have sulfate. So we should have find them on the chart here. I'm going to go down to the bottom category here and I see, actually sorry, I'm going to go to the top category and I see sulfate here towards the bottom. And sulfate is here. Sulfate is generally soluble unless I have the, sul the sulfate paired with silver, mercury, or lead. In this case, it is paired with silver right here. So we say that this substance is insoluble. We represent a solid there because it usually would be soluble unless it's paired with one of these. So we put an S there for soluble. Now for copper 2 nitrate, let's move on. We see a copper and we see a nitrate. When you see nitrate, your eyes should light up. Why? Because that makes the problem very easy. We then look up here to our universally soluble substances, meaning if any of these substances are paired with anything, doesn't matter what it is, it will always be soluble. And nitrate is one of those things. So since we have nitrate present, we automatically know that this thing is soluble. We represent that with an AQ here. It doesn't matter that it's copper. It can be any substance there. Um, nitrate rules all, so it will be aqueous. So we've predicted the states of matter for this substance, or for these substances, excuse me. Let's try a different example. Here we have ammonium carbonate reacting with barium chloride to produce ammonium chloride and barium carbonate. Now, we want to predict what our products are going to be in terms of their um, states of matter. So we have ammonium chloride here. So now we look at our chart to find one of those things. We can find both actually. Um, here's ammonium, here's chloride. Both of these are soluble substances, one of which is actually universally soluble. So, since ammonium is present, we know that this is going to be universally soluble, and we put an AQ there to represent that. Now, barium carbonate. We have to find either barium or carbonate. Well, as I look through my charts here, I see carbonate there. So we have carbonate. Carbonate is typically insoluble, meaning it's a solid. However, if it's paired up with any of these substances, ammonium or an alkali metal, it would be soluble. So we check to see what it's paired up with. It's paired with barium. Barium is neither ammonium or an alkali metal, thus the insoluble title does take effect. This is a solid. And if it's a solid that comes from two aqueous solutions, we call it our precipitate. Example, we have sodium chloride reacting with lead to nitrate, producing sodium nitrate and lead to chloride. Now we have two aqueous solutions. Sorry, I didn't make that a subscript. We have two aqueous solutions uh, forming sodium nitrate and lead to chloride. So we look at a solubility chart now. We have sodium and nitrate, so we find either one of those in the chart. Again, gleaming smile, we see nitrate. Nitrate's universally soluble, so it's always going to be soluble. So, AQ for this substance here. Now, PBCL2. We try to find either lead or chlorine. Well, here is chlorine here. Generally, it's usually soluble. However, it is insoluble when it is bonded to silver, mercury, or lead. And there we have lead. So this is now insoluble. Gentlemen, please take notes on this. We're going to be using this technique and this concept um, throughout the entire semester. So please get comfortable with this. 
you'll always be given this chart to reference from. It'll be a part of your um, periodic table and polyatomic ion packet that we have in the front of the classroom. So please take notes and come to class prepared to talk about this. Adios.